So just tell us a little bit about yourself, Benjamin. Where did you come from? Where did you study? What are you up to now? Uh, well, I, I graduated from Loughborough University, uh, which is in the middle of England, um, in 2006. Um, and I studied industrial design. Um, and over the last three years, I've been building uh, my studio, which is um, what I do now. I, I run it from East London um, and work with Scandinavian, Italian, and British manufacturers. You showed in the D3 design talents uh, in the recent past, didn't you? Tell us about that and tell us how that helped you in your career. Uh, yeah, uh, D3 design talents was last year um, and I showed a couple of little chairs. It was a good platform to, to go out and meet people. Um, I actually spent more time going around the show and, and walking onto stands and, and exhibitions and introducing myself than I did standing next to the chairs. And I, I think that was, a, that was a good thing to do um, because uh, the contacts I made from last year have, um, have really helped, and I, I've launched a couple of collections based on the contacts I met in uh, last January. Let's have a look at your first image, Benjamin. Well, I'm afraid this is a, a bit of a tragic image. This is my graduation project uh, on its way back from a gallery uh, that, that it was being shown at, thankfully after graduation. But um, there were a little range of lights that um, you, you blew out, and they're sort of LED, and they're sort of candles, blown glass and, and leather. Um, and, you know, they were okay, they did okay for graduation. But um, it's, this taught me a lot. Um, it taught me a, a lot about letting go of projects because, I mean, this was my baby for, like, a whole year. And uh, to, see, to open the box and to see this was, uh, was uh, fairly terrible, to say the least. Um, uh, but I also got compensation from it. Um, and um, that, 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 was, that was fantastic, obviously, a bit of money. But um, I used it to, to put together my first exhibition. Um, and it, was, it, it wasn't planned. I mean, when I graduated, I didn't, I didn't think, okay, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start a business, I'm going to start showing some things. I actually had, had it in mind that I was just going to work through industrial design consultancies and, and, and sort of work my way up that, that kind of ladder. But it sort of made me stop, think, and, and, and gave me an opportunity, really. So your work getting destroyed actually turned out to help you in the end? Yeah. Who gave you the compensation then, the shipping company? Uh, actually, the gallery. Um, they were pretty good about it, uh, and, and they were fairly upset about the whole thing as well. But um, it was just sort of a, a happy accident in a way. I think it worked out really nicely. And I think, um, I, think that's, I think that's been really important, because even when projects don't work, when you've invested a lot of time, and, and you maybe can't um, give it to a manufacturer to, to launch it in Cologne or somewhere, um, it doesn't matter. Just do the next thing, and it's only a light, and it's only a piece of furniture. Okay, so this picture, tell us about this one. Um, well, my training in industrial design was uh, at university was fairly hands-off. I, I studied, you know, uh, consumer goods, so uh, you know, injection moulding and all of these kind of things that were great theory, and, and we did some great projects, but they weren't really about getting, getting involved and in getting understanding materials and understanding processes in, in a hands-on way. So this is, this is really about my work, I think. So... This is a range of lights that I did for uh, a British brand called Viaduct, uh, and they were the hand-thrown clay pendant lights. And um, I, I really just love going out, and, and uh, I, I mean, I didn't do this. Um, I mean, I, I probably can't make anything, to be honest. But um, I, I met a guy in Wales who, who, who was great at throwing pottery, and, and sort of throughout the last three years, I've been meeting these sort of fairly uh, eccentric people sometimes, um, that with these f fantastic skills, and I, I love taking it from one context, from a craft context, and bringing it into an industrial context, and making it into something more commercial in, in, in the sense that we see in, in Cologne. Um, so really, it's been about um, getting my hands onto materials, and it's very important to the, to the reason why I'm doing things, really. But you don't consider yourself to be a craftsperson. You don't have that desire. You're quite happy to say, OK, I'm the designer, and, I, and you're happy to work with people who do have those skills. Absolutely. I think, I think you can't be everything. I think, I think good designers are the people that use other good people. You know, whether, whether it's who you employ or whether it's who makes your things, I think design isn't, isn't necessarily about making things. Okay, I recognize this place. Yeah, so this is Brick Lane. Um, and uh, this, I say this is about um, maybe 10 minutes from my studio. Uh, so anyone that doesn't know, this, this is uh, part of East London. Um, and... Uh, I, I, lo I love cities. Um, uh, I love the people. I love the vibrancy. I love, I love the, the clash of cultures. Um, uh, but I've never lived in a city until um, about a year ago. I've visited lots. I've been all around Europe and, and, and been to all, all, this, uh, all the main cities. And um, 
uh, it's, it's been a real sort of step change in what I do, actually, and it's allowed me to um, sort of mature in a way, and um, I, I think that's probably true of my work as well. Okay, tell us about this then. Uh, uh, I, think, uh, I think this is uh, probably a slightly bland uh, set of images, um, but that's sort of the point. Um, I, I, I love sort of everyday things, um, the, the kind of things that you look at and you that don't scream design, and they don't scream look at me. Um, I think they work really well. Um, they have a, a really good use of materials, and, and they have a really industrial use of materials. And, and it's something um, that, that I love and, and that sort of runs through my work. Um, it's just the simplicity and, and the design for use rather than design for show. I think this is a collection of your work, is it not? T yeah. Tell us about this then. Is it, uh, Benjamin was... Um, must have been very busy in the first half of last year because you showed at 100% Design and you, 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 you produced a kind of an amazing body of new work in a short period of time, if I recall. Is this, is this that output? Uh, yeah, it is. Uh, a year ago, um, I was lucky enough to get a, an award in London which gave me a stand this year at 100% Design London. And um, I used the opportunity to um, create... I created eight pieces, um, but each was for a different manufacturing brand. So... It wasn't just a range of uh, prototypes or experiments, which, which, which can be great, um, but it was about cementing the fact that I have a design studio and I, I work with clients. Um, and it was about showing uh, different, different ways of working with people, um, but obviously it was also about sort of reinforcing the fact um, of how I work with materials and things like that. Um, so, so they were with, uh, the different pieces were with um, various sort of Scandinavian, British, Dutch, um, Portuguese uh, brands. So this was September, bringing us sort of almost up to present day. And I imagine that top left, that lamp up there, is the one that we saw being made in the Potter's studio earlier on. Yeah, I'm glad you recognised it, yeah. <laughs> and um, just tell us what's coming up next for you then. So you, you said you've had a busy year. What, what does the future hold in store for you? Um, really, just to, to keep going, I, I, I'm working um, with quite a lot of different manufacturers, ma mainly across furniture and lighting and it's been uh, with different sort of relationships so sometimes I approach them um, with, with the body of work and they say okay I, li I, li I like what you're doing um, would you do something for us and, but more, 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 more often than not at the moment I'm being approached to do things and there'll be various launches in, um, in Stockholm, in Milan, in interior, in, in Belgium and um, really it's just, just, just keep trying to do um, good things. Well, brilliant. Thanks for coming over to speak to us, Benjamin, and um, good luck with the future. Great. Cheers, Marcus.